Hey everyone, welcome to Tier 5. Two really quick things I want to mention uh, before we get started. First of all, some people have been asking in the comment section of some of these why I'm not going into specific events of debunking because I come across a lot of it while I'm researching this stuff. Uh, and the main reason is I kind of just don't want to ruin the fun. Like, I'm here to present the theories because I think they're cool and interesting. And if with everyone I get into, well, here's what that's probably not true, then. I mean, it kind of takes some of the magic out of it. Uh, however, a lot of people have been discussing them in the comments and talking about them, and I think that's great, and that's awesome, and I even get in on that sometimes, but I just don't want to do it in the video to not, like I said, ruin the fun for anyone. Also, as someone pointed out about a week ago, I was talking about how insane it was that I was at a thousand subscribers, and now I'm at like 2,600, and I can't believe it. Like, the, the growth has been crazy. Like over a thousand percent compared to how I was doing last month and it's all thanks to you guys um, it really does mean the most I know I say that a lot like oh thank you for watching but I really do mean it thank you for watching uh, and I'm going to keep doing this actually uh, there is one more thing I forgot to mention a lot of people have been asking me in the comics like what I'm gonna do when the uh, icebergs over uh, for one I already do like different movie reviews and stuff like that on this channel but as far as this kind of content goes, there are several other icebergs to look over. Not just conspiracies, but like lost media and horror movies and stuff like that. Uh, there's true crime stuff, and whatever I get into, I promise it's just going to be the cool and the bizarre. So uh, there's definitely more stuff I want to do that I will do. So this iceberg won't be the end of it. It's fun, but it won't be the end of it. Without further ado, we will go ahead and get into it. And as I mentioned before, thank you for watching. Tier 5 is the Animaster, and the description reads... This kind of knowledge is often hidden in plain sight or can be found in very ancient texts after meticulous research that may take dozens of years. From this point on, same people have a hard time even understanding most of these concepts. The journey starts here. First up we have Magic of the State, which was a novel written by Michael Tossig. From all the descriptions and summaries I read about the book, it's essentially about this spirit that acts as a queen that goes to this mountain and creates this whole sort of like spiritual realm for people to inhabit in. Uh, but that doesn't really matter because where the conspiracy comes in is the entire idea that this book is a metaphor for the state and governments. And in other words, this whole illusion of magic that this spirit queen creates is similar to how we all simply fall in line with the illusion of the state and that perceived impermeance of the state is the magic of the state. Crank Incident refers to the disappearance of the third Crank movie starring Jason Statham. For those that don't know, Crank is famous for being over the top and insane and violent and edgy, and in a good way. It's like a fun action movie. However, there are two of them, but the third one just all of a sudden, as soon as production was over, disappeared. The online story is that this is because, like, social justice warriors got onto it because yeah uh, women were depicted very poorly throughout the movies however the true version as the conspiracy states is that the movie was about jason statham exposing hollywood uh, satanic cults and alita satanic cults and him going on a rampage through that and because of the content of it that's the real reason that the movie got canned Sycamore Knoll is in reference to an underground plateau located six miles off the coast of Malibu, California. About 2,000 feet underwater, and so predominant that it can even be seen from Google Earth, there is this predominant plateau that sticks up out of the ground, leaving people to think it's an underwater base, even that of extraterrestrial origin. In 95, people started to point at it and figure out it was there, and there was a lot of research happening around it at the time, and it turns out that this had been kept secret for nearly 40 years. Reactionless drive is in reference to a theory in physics uh, of the propellantless motor, which if you're familiar with the movie Interstellar, is the ship at the end that manages to move off of its own motion so without needing any fuel source and theoretically it could lead to a forever lasting engine that does not require fuel. Theories range on how this could be accomplished. Actually another thing mentioned later in this episode uh, is a thought process that could lead to a propellantless motor. Uh, most often it has to do with gravity and the idea that if you can make gravity work in a centrifugal motion, it could be used as a propellant. Enneagram is something that you may be familiar with as it is a very popular online test that you can take that determines your personality type on a series of numbers one through nine, so there are nine different personality types that you could be. However, the roots of this are a bit more deep than you may think. 
The origins of Enneagram are traced back to esoteric and mysticism, and it's the idea that it's not just your personality type being determined, but it is the manner by which you can achieve enlightenment. So through this personality test that you can take, you can figure out how to find your higher self. Commentary Earth has two real theories, uh, the first of which and the more common one being that um, the Earth only exists in the form that it does or is only possible to exist because of comets. Both the crust exists as fertile grounds because of comets that hit it however many million years ago, or the idea that as comets pass by the Earth, they deliver the necessary nutrients and trace elements that we need in our ecosystem to continue to survive. The other theory is that Earth itself was originally a comet of another system, and the high temperatures led to gas exposure, which led to the conditions needed to create our now planet. Rockmen, or the rock apes, are in reference to a group of Sasquatch-like creatures that were seen by American GIs while in Vietnam. Batututs, as they were called by locals, were so predominant in the area that one mountain uh, that American GIs were stationed on was known as Monkey Mountain because every patrol that went out came back reporting that they had seen the Rockmen. It was so predominant that in 1974, after the war was over, an NVA general led an entire expeditionary force back into the combat zone that they fought Americans in in Vietnam just just to see if they could discover these creatures. And if you're curious about what they would do, they would see people, begin throwing stones at them, and then run away. Some stories even saying that they threw back grenades that the Americans had thrown. Uh, despite this, none were ever caught or no bodies were ever found, and it's believed that they lived in the caves and rat tunnels uh, in the Vietnam combat zones. Cap Dois is the name given to the skeleton of an Argentinian giant which has been famous for some time throughout history not only that but this 12 foot tall skeleton has two heads and the story goes that in 1673 spaniards had captured it in argentina and were bringing it back to spain they had it tied to the mast of the ship to which the giant broke loose killed four sailors and was eventually killed by the crew to which the body was brought back and hosted in museums and circuses and things such as also as far as a deeper dive is concerned there's absolutely going to be one about giants and agartha and that whole sort of canon of philosophy uh, I just haven't decided if I want to do them together or separate yet, but there will be one, trust me. So I come to you now with another shame, uh, such as I had with Nexus 7. Uh, protodites, the word proto means before or original, and dite means small or might. Uh, so I imagine it has something to do with microscopics or biotech, like nanotechnology or something such as, but um, protodite is also the name of something from the Bionicle lore, <laughs> and I'm not kidding. So everything I researched just led to that, and I promise I tried, but I could not find anything. So like Nexus 7, this is my second failure, that uh, if one of you can mention in the comments to find out for the corrections video, please do, but uh, I come to you shameful, so sorry about that. Cat Nuns is in reference to a group of nuns who were living in a monastery in the Middle Ages of France who one day, for seemingly no reason, one of the nuns meowed to another, to which that nun meowed back. And then they went and did it to another one, and it got to the point where the entire monastery exclusively communicated through meows. Keep in mind, these nuns were also interacting with people of the town, and anytime they would come out to buy supplies or whatever, they would meow to the people there too. It got to be such a problem that the town hired the army to come in and threaten to whip the nuns to death if they didn't stop meowing, and even then it took some time. This is often chalked up to a case of mass hysteria, as was the dancing plague that I mentioned in the last year. Uh, however, it's still odd that this happened at all. Max Spires was a famous conspiracy theorist from England who claimed that at a young age he was kidnapped to be a part of a government super soldier program to which he then escaped and became dedicated to outing the British government, which is why labels like conspiracy theorist were thrown on him so often. He spoke at several TED talks and different conferences about being weary of one's own government and led people on ideas such as investigating more into whatever the news propagates and things like that. That was until he went to visit his friend in Switzerland and then while setting on the catch began throwing 
throwing up a black liquid and died in his friend's home. The cause of death to this day is still weird, and a day before he died, he texted his mom that he was onto something and if anything happens to him to investigate. Not only that, but his fiance came out afterwards and said at the conference he was giving the next day, he was going to expose several elites that he had found connections to. And then he dies from throwing up black goo, so I'm sure those aren't connected at all. Acoustic Attacks is in reference to an event that happened at the American Embassy in Cuba in August of 2017. Several US and Canadian embassy members all of a sudden began feeling these intense pains in their head to where they were unable to think or function, to which they all evacuated the embassy, and it turns out they all suffered severe brain damage. While there was no direct source of this issue, it's believed that acoustic attacks were the culprit, or essentially low frequency or unperceivable attacks of sonic vibrations or sound that lead you to pain or passing out. And we know this technology exists because it's actually used in riot control techniques. This was such a big deal that it led to the term Havana Syndrome, which is in reference to, again, these acoustic attacks. Bloodletting magic is exactly what it says. The idea that uh, satanic or Wiccan rituals that are performed whenever they use blood are more effective than they naturally are. Uh, and you can add a layer to that and say the reason that people go disappearing and these elitist rings and things like that is because they need the blood for whatever spells they perform. Google Earth's black zones is exactly what it says. There are entire regions on Google Earth that are either blurred or completely blacked out. Some of these kind of make sense, like a lot of North Korea's military stuff is blacked out in order to not, you know, cause a panic over that. However, some are much more odd, such as Anthrax Island, Roswell, New Mexico, and the Garden of Gethsemane. So yeah, make of that what you will. Crowdfunded assassination is again exactly what it says. The idea being that whenever there are these large elites such as a president or world leader who is wanting to be assassinated, obviously one person can't fund it, but on the deep web, uh, there's these pots that people throw money into, and it, when it reaches a certain amount, an assassin is hired to take that person out. And of course, the conspiracy goes on to say, this is all done through crypto, it's completely untraceable, done with aliases, uh, and it leads to the idea that thousands, if not tens of thousands of people contribute towards these group killings. Serpent Seed is another belief in the now multiple times mentioned Gnostic religion. The belief essentially says that in the Garden of Eden, whenever Satan appeared to Eve in the form of a serpent, that he mated with her and the resulting child was Cain. The idea being that as sin entered the world and of course Cain was the first murder, it all came from this literal seed of the devil. Panopticon is an architectural design that was theorized by Jeremy Bantham in the 18th century. The idea for it being it was supposed to be designed as a prison in which every single cell member could be watched from one position by one guard in a chair. However, the catch to it was the cells were built in such a way that the prisoners could not tell at what time they were being watched. They just know that there was a potential that they could be watched and therefore you could control a much larger population with a much smaller group of people. Bantham then went on to say this could be applied to hospitals, schools, other education centers, and Obviously, it's now used as an analogy to talk about the state and totalitarianism in which the few govern the many. The Inunaki village is a story that goes like this. In Japan during the Edo period that lasted from 1603 to 1868, there was a village in the mountains that decided they did not want to be a part of the Japanese government and decided to become secluded to themselves. It was then figured out by outsiders that this was done in order to practice the occult, such as blood rituals and sacrifices and things such as, and this eventually led to an incident in which someone in the town slaughtered 33 people during one of these rituals. Because of this, the Japanese government at the time decided to take the village off of every map and simply cut off all roads and seclude it to itself. Now when walking up the Inunaki mountain, there is a sign that can be seen off the road which reads, Japanese regulations and constitutions do not apply here. What's even creepier about this village more than any just standard haunted ghost town is the theory says that these people are still alive and after hundreds of years of inbreeding and demonic practice they've become these subhuman monsters that kill and cannibalize anyone that walks up the mountain alone. It also hurts my feelings that Suicide Force gets as much attention as it does when I think stuff like this is 
way cooler. Prana release has to do with prana, which is a popular subject of Eastern philosophy theory. Prana is, as far as I can equate it to, sort of a life force, which people can adopt and take on themselves and then express in different ways. Kind of like aura or ki energy, uh, if you're familiar with those concepts. Several theories that I found say that upon death, all of the prana that is stored in the body is released and this is sort of what some philosophies consider to be a soul, but it goes a step forward in saying that those around you at your time of death can absorb that prana and therefore be taking in part of your essence. 24 hour year could be in reference to two separate things. One of them could be the actual idea that every 24 hours we experience a full rotation around the sun and that the Earth's rotation is baloney. Other theory being that there is supposedly, uh, according to legend, a 24 hour time slot that is missing from our historical record, which can be explained using the books of Isaiah and Joshua in the Old Testament of the Bible, in which God stopped the Earth for a total of 24 hours during a battle Joshua had and a prayer that Isaiah had. Not sure which one this is referring to, so there's both, and uh, just pick one, I guess. Corporate's kill list is exactly what it says. There are certain people who corporations have a problem with, because even if they compete with each other on the market, they definitely have an understanding with each other when it comes to the deep state. Therefore, there are certain people that they want dead. Max Spies, which I mentioned earlier, would absolutely be an example of that. The Man from Earth was a book written in 1983 by Gordon R. Dixon. The concept of this book was later adapted into a Star Trek episode by Jerome Bixby, and then later a movie by the same name. The plot of the story is that a man who is 12,000 years old tells his colleagues uh, about his entire experience living through the life of Christ and the rise of humanity and Babylon and all the empires falling to the present day. The theory in this is that the original author George R. Dixon actually is either this man himself or experiencing it and theories range with his predictions of history and his discrepancies that have happened throughout history. But pretty much the idea that Gordon used this book as a way to sort of confess to the readers of his true nature. Interdimensional Bigfoot's exactly what it says. Uh, those familiar with parallel universes will also be familiar with the idea of portals, the idea that there could be beings that could willingly transport between dimension to another, which would explain why something like Bigfoot has never been seen. Uh, there are also symptoms that occur with these interdimensional portals, such as fauna changing and certain acoustic vibrations in the air. And looking at throughout history, this can not only explain Bigfoot sightings, but also things such as Mothman's appearance and other various cryptids, saying that maybe they're not just creatures like animals as we think of them, but more like these higher order interdimensional beings. Organic Black Helicopters has two different stories behind it. One of which being the idea that there are these black helicopters that can be seen passing over, especially the United States very often, that don't have any identity uh, markings of what country of origin they belong to. They normally fly in groups and they have never have any distinguishable pilots. The idea of this being that this is an alien creature or some kind of cloaking mechanism especially since these are normally sighted around the time of UFOs appearances. The other theory being there are these microscopic nanobots that look like helicopters that are injected into people's bloodstreams and at any moment will cause people to turn into a helicopter. Moving on. Manatees or humans are exactly what it says. Uh, the main idea being that back in history at some point, there's a branching off point between humans and manatees, and that's why there are similar features between the two. However, the further statement of this is that manatees are either the descendants of some Al Atlantean sea people, or even cursed sailors who were lost at sea and became so accustomed to it that their bodies were transformed through magic and witchcraft into manatees. The John Teeter Project was a reference to forum posts that took place between 2000 and 2001. In these, a man who said his name was John Teeter said he was from the year 2036 and he had come back in time to retrieve an old computer that can properly do simple code in order to fix a problem in the modern day. Some believe this to be the now recognized Unix 2038 problem, which would oddly make sense for someone in 2000 to say, claiming to be a time traveler. 
From that, John Teeter answered several questions saying that there would be a civil war in the United States, a brief but deadly World War III, and it would eventually lead to a new prosperous age of technology and industrialization. Russian crime dungeons was hard to find any information on. I think this is referring to gulags, which for those who don't know is essentially these Russian prisons or dungeons uh, in which political prisoners most often are thrown in indefinitely and sort of left to fend for themselves in order to survive. So it's sort of like literally throwing people into a hole so that they're not a problem to you anymore. Universal communion is a concept in predominantly Catholicism that communion can be taken by everyone of every religion. They don't necessarily have to be Catholic. Uh, however, I do have to mention that in research for this, even on Catholic sites, I found several mentions of the exact phrase New World Order of Christianity and all religions coming together. So I'm guessing this is an idea amongst elitists that uh, all religions can be combined into one through the idea of universal communion. There Are No Force is actually a very poetic one that I am a fan of, uh, even if I don't necessarily believe it. It's the idea that every forest as we know it is not a forest and simply the small sprouts or stems of what are really trees. Well then what are really trees? All the mountains that we see from mountain ranges to plateaus are the shaved off tops of trees and the trees that grow up from them are just sort of like the grass sprouting out from its cracks. It gives this beautiful idea that the world used to be a giant magnificent forest and that something caused all of that to be destroyed. Uh, the theory goes on to say that rocks as we know them are simply the pebbles of what used to be rocks and again this whole idea that the earth used to be this giant utopia that's been lost. Asian blood types is in reference to the idea that in Asian culture, specifically Korean culture, blood types are often used as a basis to determine one's personality. From everything I read on this, uh, it's kind of similar to how in the United States people base personalities, or some people base personalities, off of their astrological sign. So this is sort of like the Asian equivalent of that. Ghost condensate is kind of difficult to explain. This is the theory that I mentioned earlier when talking about the reactionless drive. I'm going to try to quickly summarize. So from my understanding, a ghost in a physics spectrum is a number or factor that cannot be determined and sort of appears on its own. So it is like the in-between variable whenever you're trying to figure out how a system works. A ghost condensate would be a byproduct of that that contributes a little more energy than originally thought because of factors we can't take into account. The theory with ghost condensate is that if it is harnessed correctly, this little bit of power can be recycled on itself over and over and over and eventually create a reactionless drive. See, what do y'all need? college for when you got me. Breatharianism is a philosophy that is very, very closely related to Aenidia, which is sort of a mystic Eastern religion, and it all has to do with prana, which I mentioned earlier. The idea of Breatharianism being that if someone balances their key right and properly figures out how to withstand their own body's state of homeostasis, they can survive with no food and in some cases even no water. There's people who've done very uh, in-depth videos on it better than I can, but essentially uh, there have been people who have gone months at a time under surveillance without eating or drinking, while at the same time there have been total fakes who have said they haven't ate in years and then someone finds a picture of them at Thanksgiving eating. So yeah, it goes both ways. Famously, breatharianism is known as a pseudoscience because several people who have tried a diet of nothing have died, non-surprisingly, and obviously cast a doubt onto this entire philosophy. Memphis rap is a brand of rap that originates from Memphis. The original name for most of this is horrorcore, as a lot of the music is composed of noises, uh, has lyrics that discuss murder and suicide and other heavy concepts. It gives an overall feeling of creepy, with most people who listen to it describing that they feel like they're not supposed to be doing it. The Three Six Mafia, which is now a famous rap group, and if you think about the name, 3-6 or 666 Mafia was one of the pioneers of this genre, with their original tracks having lyrics such as the daughter of the devil and talking of Satanism and rituals and things such as. Idea being that Memphis rap is either a confession of demonic 
events or sort of a inner look at it. Your relief map, or as it's also known, the map of the creator, is a reference to a white stone slab that was found in 1995. While doing research in the Ural Mountains, a Russian researcher discovered these texts from the 18th century that said there were several stone slabs that were used as maps of the area. Uh, the researchers then went out to try to discover whatever the stone slab was and came upon a small village in the Ural Mountains that brought forward one of the slabs. On the stone slab was a perfect one-to-one -one replica of the valley they were in, but not only that, it had perfectly mapped out irrigation systems, dams, and other large-scale structures that could not have been built at the time the stone was dated, which was anywhere from 8,000 to 120 million years old. Not only that, but the edges of the map, from what it looks like, have been cut off, implying that it is a piece of a bigger structure. This is, as you could imagine, one of the reference points used when talking about ancient aliens. Bitcoins created by banks is, again, exactly what it says. The idea that banks realized that currency was dying out and there therefore needed to be a new currency, so they developed the subversive currency to banks while they secretly own it and are just perpetuating the cycle they were already on. One of the main theories behind this is that the man who created Bitcoin, Satoshi Nakamoto, uh, is an alias and the man has never been discovered, with the idea being that a big banking group simply made this fake alias in order to create their own enemy so they can play both sides. Psychotropic warfare is in reference to times that drugs such as LSD or shrooms have have been implanted into either water supplies or food supplies in order to mentally stunt the enemy. Not only enemies in the traditional sense, but a lot of this can be traced back to in the 60s and 70s after MK Ultra, whenever the government was putting acid into impoverished area water supplies to simply see what would happen or to quell uh, dissonance in the people of those areas. Basically the idea that you can poison the minds of whoever you're up against. New chronologies and history denials can go very deep, but sort of to shorten it, it's just the idea that there are now new theories that entire hundred year periods of history are either made up or simply filled in, uh, such as there's an idea that Egypt, as it's historically believed, is 300 years older than it actually was, so therefore that's 300 years of history that's just been entirely fabricated. A lot of this relates to biblical history, which is just using the Bible as the basis for history, and the idea that there are a few year discrepancies that exist between the two, so using the Bible as a hardcore basis for it leads to some miscommunications between how long things really existed which would mean that the earth isn't exactly as old or at least human history isn't as old as we theorize it to be china's real population uh, is in reference to the fact that china now reports that they have about 1.4 billion people in their populace however using things such as tv broadcasting and train and vehicle amounts and other things such as which can be used to measure the amount of a population it puts the country at about 500 million now, what that means is that there are definitely people who would not communicate in ways like trains or TV or cell phone, so therefore it's more than 500 million. However, at the same time, there's absolutely no way to know how many people there actually are if they have no way of being seen through government registries. That would mean that China is artificially inflating its numbers even double as much working off of this theory in order to just seem like a bigger world power and more specifically to have a higher population than India who historically they, they do not have a good time with. So basically China fluffing the numbers by a lot in order to seem more important than they are. Since China is kind of one of the last bastions of the entire idea that the government is always right in the modern world, uh, I could definitely see that and it does make sense. And that will do it for the first part of tier five. Thank you all so much for watching. It really does mean a lot. Uh, part two should be out soon as well as some deeper dives that are coming out and a few different sort of subversive conspiracies that I've got in mind as well as a true crime story that I wanna do soon. I hope you enjoyed. Again, thank you all for watching. Very special thank you to my patrons. There have been several people who have recently signed up and it really does mean the world. That is like a whole different level of support and it really does mean a lot uh, and lets me justify doing this as much as I do and I really do appreciate it. Thank you. So a special thank you to all my patrons and a very, very special thank you to my top tier patrons. Thank you, Kayla. Thank you, Pef. Thank you, Eddie. Thank you, Benjamin. Thank you, Tim. Thank you, Publius. 
Thank you, Saucy. Thank you, Phasia. And thank you to the newest member of the Top Tier Patron family, Steven. Thank you all. It really does mean the most. A link to that, as well as the original iceberg image, will be in the description as always. I will get part two to you as quickly as I can. And as I said before, above all else, thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one.